there is an explosion that comes from outside the camp. It is not quite dusk yet. The sun is low, very low, on the side of the mountain range, washing the snowscape in orange gold. And who is the first one, do you think, uh, to go and look at what is what is sprawled before you? Oh, that's right. I was I was already on the Badlands. I was talking to Shemeshka. Shit. Yes, you were. You were doing that. Um, and you turn your head, and um, you must have been pretty engrossed in your conversation, or else this enormous looming shadow of an army came right the fuck out of nowhere. Suddenly, oh for, at one minute there was nothing, and then the next minute there is this slowly growing. It's almost like it's blotting out the sun, this swarm of demons, both flying and on the ground, all of them snarling up the mountainside toward you all at once. Um, where is everybody else? They're all in the fort, y'all. Everyone's in the fort and in the camp outside the fort. The alarm hasn't been raised yet. Maybe get on that. I think she's going to turn into a vulture, giant vulture. Okay, turn into a vulture and do what? She's just gonna, like, fly down to the camp and, uh, change back when she's on the ground and be like, Guys! Hello! There is a giant army! Get out here! Very dramatic. A plus. 10 out of 10. Except she can't yell. I forgot that she can't do that. Oh, that's true. She can't scream. She <laughs> can't yeah, scream. That's last, true. Yeah. Um, one of the- it's- you- the first person that you run- run into, it, almost literally, like, you almost literally run into her, uh, it's a little mm -hmm. page girl who sees you- looks at you, cranes her neck over one of the tents, swears in some language that you don't understand, uh, and then runs to someone else who, in turn, like, the chain reaction gets started, and soon, uh, from somewhere in the camp, a horn sounds. And the entire army, perhaps a little too late, starts to wake up. Yeah, I feel like, uh, Selwyn is already using the message cantrip and just, like, frantically, WHERE ARE YOU?! <laughs> WHAT'S GOING ON?! Danger is what's happening. Where are you? Should I fly to you? I was just a vulture. I can vulture again as many times as I need. Sorry. Or would you prefer a bat? What's your what's your poison, babe? <laughs> Don't care. Just get here. We're in the mess hall. Okay. Bat it is. Love you. Bye. <laughs> and I think Selwyn then sets about finding the others now that she's located one. One person that she's stressed about. <laughs> it doesn't take you too long to gather everyone together, um, but... You know, that said, there's an army marching toward you, so every moment is precious. Um, mm. You all gather up uh, in the field, gather up in the mess hall, uh, and just as you're asking, everyone's like, okay, what did you see? Is everyone okay? Uh, a very familiar face arrives. It's Shiraka Deladir. Uh, he comes bursting into the mess hall from the front door, wind and snow blowing in behind him, and he says, uh, I have good news and I have bad news. Actually, it's it's all bad news, so I'm just going to give it to you from the least bad to the worst bad, if that's all right with you. I think time is of the essence, okay, so let's yes, just Okay, yes, all right, let's just... It's like, so, least bad news. Um, we have spotted Bishaba. We, we've seen her. She's flying above her armies. She is here. Uh, we don't know exactly where she's going. Uh, further worse bad news. Uh, there seems to be another demon lord with her. Ex not, not excellent. What kind of demon no. lord's name do we have general appearance i was i am not uh particularly schooled uh in in the names of the demon lords of the abyss uh i can tell you that it was definitely a demon lord just based on its size and its proximity to bashaba uh worse bad news there is something extremely large that they are both riding on so we're going to need to uh we're going to need to take care of those three things as quickly as possible Excellent. Ember hefts uh, his holy lightsaber <laughs> to his shoulders <laughs> and is like, <laughs> I think he looks around at Vasha. And, oh yeah, like, Vasha's like, like already like, stringing their bow, yeah. like, they're ready. He's like, come on team, we've dealt with demons before, we can handle this. I mean, Baku's like, I wish we didn't have to deal with this, but we sure can. <laughs> uh, Elminster comes out uh, from somewhere? Who the fuck knows? Elminster is just kind of around, just like all the time. <laughs> Uh, he says, yes, you do have some experience with demon lords. Perhaps that is best left to you and those who have done this before. So then who's hell. taking, uh, oh. Nihilus steps forward at this point and is like, well, I guess we're going straight for Bashaba. He says, yes, we are somewhat limited on that option. We do need to have a very specific person ready to take on Bashaba. 
That does leave the large thing they're writing on. Did you did you see what it was? Uh, he uh, and Shiraki says, "I uh, his his voice is shaking a little bit." He says, "Well, I I have a theory, but I'm not." And Elminster is well, he looks kind of impatient. Says, "Out with it, lad! What did you see?" Uh, he says, "Well, I've never actually seen one in person, so I can't say for sure, but it it looked an awful lot like a Tarasque." I was hoping you were not going to say that, Ariati says. Like, no! The what? It looks like a what? Oh, God. Everyone roll Arcana. Uh, 13 and up. You have heard of a Tarasque. A Tarasque uh, is a legendary... Um, like, it depends on the age, right? The younger Tarasques are only about as big as a, a very large building. Older Tarasques are said to be as large as continents. So, hopefully, this is a younger Tarasque. That's- it's not. They Spoiler are- <laughs> they are notorious for being harbingers of destruction. They have completely leveled cities in the past. Just in one fell swoop. They have a very bad reputation. They are large. They are nasty. They are prone to swallowing people whole. Okay. Fun! <clears throat> and I would like to remind everyone, this is the mini-boss. Okay. Oh, no, that's so. Oh no. I guess a uh, Qatar and Elminster are taking that on. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Do a good job, guys. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> Have fun. Oh, God. Okay. I believe in you. <laughs> oh boy. I got like a thirteen and a fourteen. I feel like I kind of know what it is, but not a lot. I like I'm looking like my Nyla's looking around and she's like, "That's like the big." Monster. It was in a. It was in some books. I remember. It's very big, isn't it? That's. Elminster says yes. It's it's the large continent-sized uh, monster that can devour cities with one breath. Yes, that's the one. <sighs> oh. Um. She turns and looks at the rest of the tree, but she's like, "Well, good luck. Bye. <laughs> I'm gonna battle the evil god. See so... you later." <laughs> So we don't have a lot of time to waste. We got to get out there. Mm -mm. Qatar, you and Drista Worden and Elminster Almer are the first to go out. The vanguard is already scrabbling to take on the hordes and hordes of demons that are coming in like a tidal wave around you. The Tarask, you can feel it more than see it now, coming up the mountainside and shaking the very earth underneath you, even through two feet of snow, even 500 yards away. But it is rapidly getting closer, and you can see two small figures riding its head. Uh, what do you do? Katar is gonna look at Dritz and Elminster and be like, well, I can transform into any number of things, but the question is, how do we get it to shake off the other two. Uh, Drist says, well, a good place to start might be by getting its attention. Can you transform into anything big enough that it can't swallow you? Katar, like, nods at Drist, like, oh yes, I can I can definitely get its attention with something and transforms into a giant mammoth. <laughs> Drist is and... a little bit taken aback. He's like, oh yeah, forgot druids could do that. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> gonna, like, do like a huge trumpeting sound and start like pounding pounding the ground with its uh, gigantic feet. Elminster, uh, slightly behind Drist, uh, uses one hand and lights up a mage fire as if to prepare himself for the oncoming battle. He says, that'll do. Go ahead. Keep its attention on you. We'll back you up. All right. Um, how far away is it from everybody? Uh, it is... Right now, about 200 feet away, but boy howdy, is it getting close really fast. I would like everyone to roll initiative, please. Okay, so Katar, you trumpet your horn and you go marching forward, and yeah, you have successfully drawn the Tarasque's attention. You go thundering down the battlefield with Drist and Elminster hot at your heels, one with both with his, oh, with his magical bow ready to fire, and Elminster with his hands sparkling with magic. You have the first attack. What do you do? I'm gonna do, because I'm already, like, hurtling towards it, I'm gonna go ahead and do a trampling charge. And with a gore attack. So it's a DC 18 strength saving throw, which I know is not that much for a Tarrasque, but... 
Okay. Oh my god! Ooh. Oh my god, it failed! Oh god. It failed! Hey! That's funny because now it's knocked prone. <laughs> oh my that's per oh my god, that's so fucking wow. cool though! <laughs> okay. I know, right? Okay, here's how I picture this going. So Qatar shifts into this huge mammoth uh, and goes charging toward the Tarask. Uh, the Tarask is well the good news is it looks like a young Tarask, so thumbs up on that. Uh, the bad news is that it is still like the size of the fortress you just left. Uh, so you go running toward it full speed. Uh, the size, maybe it intimidates you, maybe it doesn't. Either way, you go plowing directly into its foreleg. And the force of the, of the charge, combined with hitting it just the correct angle, sends the entire Tarrasque capitulating forward onto its side. And the two figures on it are thrown off and then they each fly in separate directions. It also hits it with a gore attack, so it takes some damage, but most importantly, it's knocked prone. Yeah, it is knocked prone, so go ahead and roll damage. That's a hit, nice. my friend. So that also takes 25 piercing damage. Uh, is that the and stomp or action. the... Uh, that's for the gore. The bonus action is the stomp, which I also have to roll for. So that was 25 piercing damage, you said? Yes, 25 Ooh. piercing damage. Plus the stomp. 29 bludgeoning damage for the stuff. Oof. Oof. Damn, I'm breaking out the guitar. calculator early. All right. Uh, Elminster is up next. Elminster, who has the stats of an archmage. Uh, he is not fucking around even a little bit. So he is going to cast lightning bolt at an 8th level. It needs to make a dex saving throw, and it does not have a dex modifier. And that is not good enough. So it is about to eat a whole lot of shit. Let's see. Oh my god. Wow. Alright. Doing good so far. Yep. A huge bolt of lightning crackles out of Elminster's hands and hits the Tarrasque, which is still lying prone on the ground. Uh, it is now Dritz de Worden's turn. He is going to mutter under his breath and summon his... He's going to summon Gwenwivar. Uh the enormous leopard, the enormous panther, uh, who is going to leap out of nowhere and it is going to have advantage on attacking this Tarrasque because it's prone, technically. Ooh, that's a natural 20! <laughs> oh, that's a natural 20. Okay, so Good that... Girl. Go Gwen! All right, so that is a total of 4d6 slashing damage plus uh, 10. Uh, Gwenevar leaps out of pure nothing and just takes a big old bite. I like to picture, because it, she's so much smaller than the Tarrasque, she goes straight for the eyes, just leaps right. up onto its face and just chomps into its eyeball. Blood goes spewing out from underneath her fangs and just over its over the, uh, the Tarrasque's mouth. Uh, the Tarrasque, uh, who is on his side, which is still just the coolest shit I've ever heard, uh, it is going to use its first action to get up, and oh, is it a process? Uh, it's a whole process, because this thing is big. Uh, snow and uh, dust comes raining off of it as it slowly rights itself to its feet. Uh, Gwenivar falls off in the process of it standing up, and its one remaining beady eye uh, now turns directly onto you, Katar. Uh, you are actually, you are too big for it to try to swallow. But I do need okay. uh, everyone, including Elminster and Katar and Guinevar, to make a wisdom saving throw. So Gwen and Dritz are briefly paralyzed with fear. Uh, but because you two have, uh, because Elminster and Katar have succeeded, you are immune to the Tarrasque's frightful presence for the rest of the day. All right. I have bad news. The Tarrasque has five attacks. Oh, oh that's really oh. bad. Right. Oh, Does a 22 hit your AC? Uh, you know, I'm gonna say yeah. With... Holy shit. That was its first attack. Uh, it is... That was a bite. It bites you, but it cannot swallow you. You are too big. It's gonna use its claw attack on, um, the Guinevar. That's a hit. It doesn't quite kill it, so it's gonna go ahead and try to swipe at her again. Uh, okay. Now Guinevar goes down. It returns its attention to you, Katar, and it is going to go at you with its horn. 32 points of damage. You are not in the correct place to be hit with its tail, however. Katar, we're back to the top of the order. Sure are. That was not fun. 
for him. He's kind of like, ugh, staggers back. Let's do a stomp. So, uh, Katar, like, sort of reels back and, like, looks at this huge thing and decides that instead of charging straight at its, straight, like, towards its face, like, la last time, he's gonna try to go under it because, you know, it's a giant thing, right? It sure is giant, yeah. It is giant, so there should be plenty of space for a mammoth underneath this thing, right? Sure. Sure, why not? Go ahead. Uh, You're gonna well... go for, like, a back leg or something. <laughs> All right, go for it. Whatever. So 20 feet straight towards, and it is a DC 18 strength saving. Yeah. Damn. All right, that time, no. But you still get to do <laughs> regular right. damage. That's a hit. Roll damage. Whew. My boy. <laughs> my sweet boy. He's my... like, anyway, my boyfriend's dead. I'm mad. The world's Big about mad. dead. I'm mad. Big mad. Uh, it is Elminster's turn. Uh, Elminster is going to use, uh... He's gonna use Lightning Bolt again. And 17's not good enough. Woof! Oh, damn! Woof! Elminster is so far away from fucking about. Just crushing it, man. Crushing he may be it. old and like whiskey, but, you know, he is he's, going to wreck you. He's got the stats of an Archmage. He's, he is not to be trifled with. Uh, it is Drist's turn. Drist is still under the effects of Frightful Presence, and also he just saw his, like, cat get ripped apart. So he's not feeling great. He's gonna repeat his saving throw. Or he will not be able to take an action. Nope, he oh. rolled a two. Okay. <laughs> so Drist is still terrified. Uh, the Tarask uh, rears its head back as if it is going to try to uh, like it, like it sees you go underneath it, Katar, and it does not like that at all. Uh, it tries to uh, duck its head beneath its body and try to bite at you, uh, and I will give him disadvantage on this attack roll. Nope, it still hits you. Uh, it rolled shitty. You take 19 additional points of damage, and it cannot reach you with its claws just because of the the way things are uh, way things are shaped on this thing. It's bipedal technically. Uh, and you're sort of like behind it and it can't like reach underneath its legs or behind its legs to grab you because it's kind of like a T-Rex body kind of thing going on. Yep. Uh, but it is going to hit you with its tail. Oh no, that's right. I did go straight for the tail, damn it. <laughs> yep. Uh, take, you take 30 points of bludgeoning damage as the tail sweeps you around. And um, give me a strength saving throw, Katar. Uh, that's not good enough. Uh, you are knocked prone. Oh boy. Oof. Which is also quite an endeavor with a mammoth. Uh, right. like the process of falling over kills two demons. Just like squishes them to death. <laughs> uh, and as the Tarask uses its movement to slowly turn around and bear down on you, you know, like three and a half stories of enormous legendary city-destroying Tarask, something strange happens around you, Katar. Uh, strange black vines and thorns begin to grow up around you, but not quite touching you. In fact, they seem to snarl around the legs of the Tarask, and they keep getting uh, wider and wider, expanding in an area around you. Uh, but again, not not hitting you. Needs to make a dexterity saving throw. If that is a fail. Uh, it is now restrained. Okay. And it takes... 8d6 plus 4d6. Oh, shit. Okay, wow. It takes 38 Surprise. points of damage. Uh, and you hear a whisper in your mind, a very familiar voice, Katar. Hold on, I'll get it off you. It's the Raven Queen. <laughs> yeah! Okay. I was definitely hoping that your girlfriend would step in at some point. <laughs> oh, me too. <laughs> uh, Katar, you are back up to the top of the order. Uh, I'm not prone, so gotta get up, and that, you know, not great, eight hit points left, but you know, it's fine, I have unlimited wild shape, but still gotta get back up. He's going to cast Whirlwind, level seven spell, so I need a dex save. Probably, probably not a seven. <laughs> nope, that's true, probably not. So let's see, um, ten. D6, bludgeoning damage. Oh, fuck yeah. Oof. Oh my god, you guys are fucking this thing up! 
Right, it's a 10 foot radius, 30 foot high cylinder centered around the fucking Tarask. And until the spell ends, you can use your action to move the whirlwind up to 30 feet. So it's just gonna follow it around. All right, it is now the Raven Queen's turn. She can't cast spells in this form, I don't think. Uh, so she is going to transform uh, into her shadow form, which make she is swallowed by shadows. Her speed drops to 10 feet and she gains immunity to all attacks made with weapons, magical or non-magical. Uh, in this form, she can slip through an opening as small as an inch wide, but cannot fly. Uh, and she is going to cast Blight at a... She is also not in the vicinity of fucking around, so she's going to use a ninth level spell slot. Oh, shit. That's my queen! 13d8 necrotic damage. Oh, my Ooh. fucking god. Oh, my god. Katar makes, like, this huge trumpeting sound, like, yeah! <sighs> oh, my god. All right. Uh, the the Tarasque is not looking so good. It's not looking really hot. That was the Raven Queen's turn. Next up in the order uh, is Elminster, uh, who is shouting in the back, So good of you to join us, my lady! Uh, and he is also gonna, why not? He's gonna also blow his in ninth level spell slot. Nope. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> it is Drist's turn. Uh, Drist is going to repeat his saving throw. Oh my god, he beat it! Wait, what? He finally Ooh. beat his, his spell save. Yeah, I was like, has he attacked at all other than Guadalupe? Yeah, I was like, no. Uh, so yeah, he uh, snaps out of it, uh, and he is no longer affected by Frightful Presence, and he is now immune to it. Uh, and now he's pissed off, because this thing just killed his cat. Fuck you, buddy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, he is going to whip out his bow. That is a hit. Ooh. And that is... 3d8 plus 14. And then he's gonna do it again. That is not a hit, so 21 damage. He's pissed, he screams like, he just killed my fucking cat! And his bow um, races out and probably lands in its soft palate, something like that, right at the roof of its mouth. And that is Drist's turn. The Tarask, uh screams in pain and is going to try yeah, that's fair. Like, normally I'd be like, well, it's smart enough to realize that the Raven Queen's intangible, but it's really not, y'all. Its in score like it's is silly. three. The modifier <laughs> is negative four. It does not understand intangibility. Poor dumb baby. So it's going to waste, I'm going to say, three of its attacks trying to get the Raven Queen in her shadow form, and it just straight up passes right through her. It screams in frustration and then takes out its last attack with its tail on, um, on Katar. And that's a hit. You take 20 points of damage. Right, he is back in his elven form now. I would advise correcting that quickly. Because yes, as long as you are not, a... as long as you are size large or smaller, it will and can, it can and will swallow you. Okay. Let's see here. A, uh, ooh, Triceratops is a good option. <laughs> what size classification is, is a Triceratops? It is a huge beast. Excellent. You are a Triceratops now. What do? The Tarask, by the way, not a fan of that. Like, it just right. killed this mammoth that was going to try to eat it, and now there's a Triceratops. Uh, same deal. I think I'm going to do gore, because now I have the horns. Yeah. That's a hit. 24 piercing damage, because I don't feel like rolling that. 24. All right. Yeah. Uh, it is now the Raven Queen's turn. Uh, the Raven Queen. I think she'll use Finger of Death, because that's a fun spell. Uh, it needs to make a DC 26 con saving throw. Nope. Takes 61 points of damage. Oh, man. It is now Elminster's turn! Elminster, uh, he is going to... Uh, <laughs> so he's just gonna use lightning bolt, and that's... Nope. It's really, 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 really getting low. Like, Katar, you might be able to finish this thing off on your next turn. Uh... The Tarask is going to... It has turned around fully now. It turns around and it tries to bite you just right in half. See how that works out for it. It's a hit. 38 points of damage. Is that on me? Yes, that's on you. Okay. And it's going to claw for an thir additional 33 points of damage. Cool. It is not. It is also not fucking around, my friends. Another hit uh, with its horns. For another 34 points of damage. And that is all it can do to you because you're no longer by its tail anymore. Are you okay? 
Uh, no, I mean, he reverted back to his oven form again. <laughs> was it on the second hit or the third hit? It was on the third hit. Okay, so at least you've got uh, that going for you. So, see the, <laughs> just one dinosaur from the next, the Triceratops melts away into Guitar, and then Guitar is like, nope, not again. And then turns into a T-Rex, because why not? <laughs> um, All these fucking dinosaurs, y'all. It's I'm going a fucking T-Rex! Yeah, exactly. It's like, he's just gonna chomp them! Big old Chomperooski. That's a hit, my friend. Roll it damage. Sure is. 33 piercing damage! Whoa! Alright, here's how I picture this. Um, the Tarask had been flailing at you. Claws and teeth flashing, horns swinging. Uh, and you use that to your advantage. It's desperation to get you out of the way, to kill you somehow. It ducks down trying to bite you in some last-ditch, all-or-nothing attack. Uh, and you lodge your Tyrannosaurus jaw into the, into the softest part of its neck. And you rip. And this fountain of blood comes spraying out in all directions. And the Tarasque makes this enormous sound. It bellows and echoes across the entire mountainside. In fact, do you think an avalanche might have triggered somewhere a little bit further away from you? Uh -oh. I need everyone who is under the Tarasque, except for the Raven Queen who's intangible. Uh, so that includes El no, Elminster's far away. So it's just you. It's just you, okay. uh, Katar. Make a dex saving throw to get the fuck out of the way. What is oh, your no. dex as a T-Rex? Probably not great. Probably not great. It's a zero. I love it. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Okay, uh, you rolled a natural one, Katar, and you are crushed underneath uh, this Tarasque. You are hit for 20 bludgeoning damage, and you are pinned. You are pinned where you are. And it's a lot of meat that's on top of you, and you feel like you are being crushed to death. What are you thinking right now? See you soon, Sal. <laughs> you... Like, you wish you could hear something, right? Like, you wish you could hear the sound of your friends trying to get you, but the fact is there is so much fucking Tarrasque on, right, on top of you that you can't hear a goddamn thing. You are slowly suffocating underneath this beast, and from somewhere, very, very far away, you hear something. Hang on! Hang on! I'm getting you! Hang on! Uh, you all are leading the second vanguard charge. You see Katar as a mammoth go careening forward towards uh, this Tarrasque and manage to knock it prone, which is cool as the coolest thing you've ever fucking seen. <laughs> uh, and your target, you recognize him. Uh, like, Bishaba is obviously going to be the smaller, skinnier one, right? And she goes flying off in another direction, and the new failers... Uh, follow her. So that's Ariazi, Selwyn, and Nyla. They go off in that direction. You follow the larger target, uh, which flaps two huge leathery wings, but it barely seems to keep itself afloat. Uh, and it lands, in fact, pretty quickly as if it can't support its own weight in the air. Uh, and it lands directly in front of you with a enormous thud. Oh, oh excellent. Boy. This thing is size classification large, which means it's about 20 feet tall. Green scaly skin, huge leathery wings, a long whipping tail. And as soon as you get close enough to it, Ember, you can not quite hear, but sense sort of dissonant whispers inside your head. It sort of shrugs one shoulder and then the other as it writes itself in the snow. And it says, I know your face and I know your reputation. Oh, good. It's always nice when I don't introduce myself. <laughs> Pull out my sword. <laughs> He says, but you have me at a disadvantage. We haven't met. My name is Fraz Urblu. So I'd like each of you to roll Arcana or Religion, whichever is higher. Yeah, that makes sense. Ember, this is your wheelhouse. You know the name Fraz Urblu. And Baku, you're just a nerd. You just, you've read about this kind of shit. Yeah. Uh, Fraz Urblu is also one of the demon lords of the abyss. His portfolio is deception and lies. But the good news is, because you're not facing him in his domain, he shouldn't be as tough as Baphomet was. 
So you've got that going for you. Like, he shouldn't be constantly regenerating health. Because he's not in the Abyss. Okay, so does this mean that my Abyssal Bane ring works? Uh, copy and paste the, uh... On any damage roll targeting a demon or a creature native to the... Yeah! He is both a demon and a creature native to the Abyss, so yeah. Yes. Woohoo! He also counts as a fiend, yeah? Uh, yes, he is a fiend, col- parentheses, demon. Um, Ember turns back to it and he goes, We killed the king of the nine hells. What makes you think we won't do the same to you? And he pulls out his holy lightsaber. Fraz Erblu chuckles this low rumble and he says, Let's test your metal then, light slinger. Everyone roll initiative! My dearest Bakunawa, you are first up in the order. You want to kill this thing. Yeah, totally. Baku is like, I, Ember, I just, maybe this is fun for you, but I'm kind of tired of this. Oh no, I'm definitely tired of this. <laughs> oh good, I'm glad, I'm glad we're not the, I'm glad we're on the same page. Sunburst, level eight spell. What sort of we save is a that? a con save. Con save. It's got a plus 14 to its con save. Let's see how this goes. Oh, yeah. So, probably better than your DC, Baku. Does it take half damage? Yeah, I'll take half damage. 18! Vasha! Yes? You are next up in the order, my OP Legolas friend. That's a hit! Casting it as a 5th level, so that is 68 lightning. 33 lightning damage, and it also takes... An additional 2d8. I'm gonna go with Radiant. And that is 10, so 43 total. OP Legolas is OP. Now shoot it yep. again. Yep. <laughs> Piece of shit. <laughs> yep. Okay, so I also got this great, 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 great uh, feature. Yeah, it's yeah. called Foe Slayer. <laughs> At 20th level, you become an unparalleled hunter of your enemies. Once on each of your turns, you can add your Wisdom modifier to the attack or damage roll of an attack you make against one of your favored enemies, which would be a fiend. Yeah, I got it. As if he needed more <laughs> reason to be OP. <laughs> so, another 26 damage, please. Oh, is that all? Somewhere, Kostya is fainting. <laughs> Next up in the motherfucking order is Fraz Erblu. Uh, Vasha, make a Wisdom save. Okie dokie, okie dokie. That's a dirty 20. Uh, the DC is 23, so that is not good enough. <laughs> All right, it is cast Confusion on you. Awesome. Uh, and I will tell you what you do on your next turn. Don't let me forget. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, exactly. Oh, no, it's right. Uh, it is going to use its uh, next attack to go straight at you, Vasha, because you just did a whole buttfuck of damage, and he's not having any of that. Mm-hmm. That's a dirty 20. What's your AC, Vasha? Uh, AC is 21. Okay, so that's half damage. Um, also, I have uncanny dodge, uh, so I can use my reaction to have damage. You cannot take reactions when you're under the spell confusion. Okay, alright. So half damage. Uh, so you take 8 damage and then it attacks you again. Uh, yeah, so that is all it can do for you this turn. Uh, next up in the order uh, is Escher. Uh, Escher, he doesn't like demons, is the thing. He's, yeah. He does not particularly enjoy the presence of demons. He's had a rough week. He's had a very rough week. A demon just enslaved him. And, like, he knows, like, it's racist to, like, lump all demons together, but also, <laughs> like, fuck this guy a little bit. Right. Um, so he's gonna cast Firestorm. He needs to make a dexterity saving throw. And his dex is plus one. Uh, that yeah, is like... not good enough. So he is going to completely encircle Fraz Erblu in a giant wall of fire. Uh, and each one does 7d10. Oh my god! Oh, that's 39 points of damage. Oh. And if he does it, he's gonna take another 7d10 damage if he tries to move again. Uh, Ember, you're up. The fire- Okay. The fire won't hit you as long- well, I mean, the fire will hit you, but you have to do something stupid like charge directly into it. Um, <laughs> that seems when like would Ember turn. ever do that? <laughs> well, I'm not gonna do it this turn, but probably next turn. Uh, this turn I'm gonna use an action to emanate a uh, holy light for myself in a radius of 30 feet. <laughs> You're gonna use an action to make yourself light up? Yep. <laughs> a whole ass action! 
Yelp. Oh, and... <laughs> because it's a fun spell. You could summon Lathander, <laughs> mm -hmm. but instead you're gonna light yourself up like a Christmas tree. Yes. Yep. This sounds very on brand. I think this is very. It's true to my character. I have How to else play... would Lathander find him if he's not glowing? Exactly. Yeah. I have to play to my character. I sure like watches you do this. And he's like, should I fucking summon him, or were you, are you not gonna? I was, I was gonna do that next turn, babe. But do you see how shiny I am? Yes, you're very shiny, but we're currently fighting a demon lord of the abyss. Okay, but do you see how shiny I see? Turns yes, out? I see how shiny. Can you focus on the demon? Is the demon within 30 feet of me? Yeah, it is. Okay, cool. Well, it's gonna take 10 radiant damage next turn. Yeah. So. I guess that's true. Thanks. Next up in the order is Baku. Baku, do something. Okay. Useful, preferably. Right. Yeah, exactly. Baku was this like, is wow, you are useful. so shiny, but you didn't hit- okay. It's okay, Ember. <laughs> I'll- I'll hit it. I know it's okay. Look how shiny I am. Yep, you sure are. And just they give, like, Asher this really apologetic look like, you sure did marry that. It's <laughs> just like, I sure did. They're gonna cast a sunbeam at level seven. This is a con save. A con save? Uh, yes. It has a plus 14 to its con save. Yeah, so that's an 18. What's your spell save DC? Spell save DC is 20. Alright, nice. so that's full damage. It only rolled an 18. Uh, 28 radiant damage. And yes, it is not resistant <laughs> to radiant damage. Vasha, you are confused. Excellent. <laughs> I'm gonna roll a d10 and tell you what you do. Uh, you That is a 3. You don't take moves or actions on this turn, and now uh, reroll your wisdom save. Okay. Well, that's a nat one. Oh. Okay, well, better luck next time. It is now Frazor Blue's turn. Like, I want him to attack the tank, but he does not understand that the tank is a threat yet, because the tank <laughs> spent their last turn <laughs> turning right, on the Christmas like, oh. lights. Oh, so that one's an idiot. Got it. Okay, look, that you're always strategic. you're all telling me about how I only ever do the same thing, and I switch it up, and suddenly it's like, ooh, <laughs> you're just shining holy light for you. It's so boring. It takes ten radiant damage. Yes. Yep. He well, sure thank does. God. <laughs> what would we have done without that ten radiant damage? <laughs> all right. Well, it now Frazer Blue now perceives Bakunawa as the biggest threat, so he is going to. Oh no. Uh, it's gonna go loping toward you, Bakunawa. Uh, you take, uh, 22 bludgeoning damage, Baku. Okay. I like to picture this, it comes barreling toward you. Uh, it comes- Blue comes barreling towards you, Bakunawa, uh, and it lashes its claws. You flap your wings once and manage to dodge one attack and then another, but then it slams its fist into you and you go hurtling backwards. It's Escher's turn. Okay. Uh, Escher sees this- nonsense going on and he's like okay fine well i'm gonna summon lathander and he is gonna cast divine intervention uh <laughs> he he shuts his eyes very tightly he clasps his hands together around his holy symbol uh and he mutters a soft prayer under his breath uh and light suddenly breaks out from the sky uh and there is a high-pitched almost it's difficult to, to hear. It's like a hum, a hum from all directions. As Lathander the Morning Lord slowly lowers from the sky, his sword blazing with holy light, transparent golden wings flapping behind him. Lathander has joined the initiative order. <laughs> I'll put him at the end. Uh, Ember, it's your turn. We're just gonna use Divine Smite. We, we know we're good at here. Uh, yeah, that's a hit. Go okay, ahead cool. and roll damage. And you've okay. got your Abyssal Bane. So yes, I do. That's eighty-one. Fuck you. Good. Yeah. <laughs> good. Good. Uh, good. I'm gonna roll again. Go straight <laughs> to hell. <laughs> Thirty to hit. Does that? <laughs> no. Fuck you. <laughs> You're like, what? Well, Asher, you told me to hit it, right? <laughs> everyone tell. Everyone gets mad at me when I hit things. <laughs> no, I get mad at you when you hit things. <laughs> everyone else is like, thank you. This is what you were made to do. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, well, this time it's much more boring because I can only get 5d8. That's 37. So I go rushing in and I hit it with my sword a couple times. <laughs> and boy, do you grab its attention. Okay. Uh, it turns its eyes to you, and then it goes slightly past you to Lathander, who lands behind you, golden wings outstretched, and he says, 
Hello, Deceiver. And he lights up his sword and he says, You know, it's gonna be sort of a paltry fight compared to killing Asmodeus, but, you know. And then he charges forward. Uh, he is going to use Light's Wrath. So that's a total of 54 damage. And then he's going to Light's Wrath it again. That's another 54. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Jesus. What a fucking OP. So Lathander, the Morning Lord, God of the Morning, lands behind you and joins you in the fray, Ember. Uh, he slashes once up its chest, and then he slashes down again and cuts off Fraz Erblu's head. Oh, oh what? And uh, it goes rolling Whoa. slightly across the floor and lands at, let's say, Vasha's feet. <laughs> what? Lathander kind of hefts his sword over his shoulder, and he looks down at you and he says... You know, you can, uh, you can save me for the challenging fights if you need to. Y'all know what come next. Yeah. Uh, Are you ready for the final boss I, battle? I don't know. <laughs> you watch as the two figures riding the Tarasque are thrown in either direction. One of them flies off to the other side uh, and is promptly assailed by Ember and Escher and Baku and Vasha. The other one uh, is flung into the middle of this unstoppable demon army, and the seas part for her, forming an almost perfect ring. Who is leading up the charge? Arya is gonna be like, everybody get behind me! <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, we might as well do it right now, right? Get all of the big shit out. Gonna cast Shape Change and turn into an ancient white dragon. I'm sorry, oh, she's what? going to do what now? What? She's going to cast the ninth level spell Shape Change, where you can assume a creature that is the same challenge rating as your level, and I'm going to transform uh? into an ancient white dragon. Yeah. <laughs> That's so fucking cool! I told you to bring right? out the big guns, and you fucking brought out the big guns. Oh my fucking right. god. She did. She's like, everyone behind me! Like, I'll take all the hits! And dragons oh can god. talk, like they can speak common, so like you can communicate. Awesome. Um, I want to specify, Selwyn has buffed her life, she's bu buffed her AC, and she is going to use a new feature called the Mystic Arcanum to cast Crown of Stars, which I will copy Please paste. do. Seven star-like motes of light appear and orbit your head until the spell ends. You can use a bonus action to send one of the motes streaking toward a creature or object within 120 feet of you. When you do so, make a ranged spell attack. On a hit, the target takes 4d12 radiant damage. That's cool. What? When you hit or miss, the moat is expended. The spell ends early if you expend the last moat. All right, cool. So you've got right. how seven star-like motes circling around your head, which not only is a very cool spell, it's also totally aesthetic for Selway. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. The three of you approach the clearing. The demons part their way for you. Uh, mostly because now there's a huge dragon that's leading up the front. <laughs> and when you finally get to the, the clearing that the crowd has made, you see Bishaba, enormous black antlers rising from the, from the top of her head. And she is staring at you with utmost malice. And she says, well, finally. Finally, indeed. She eyes you, Ariazis, and she says, Nice trick. Thanks. I feel like we'll need a lot versus you. She nods her head in agreement. She makes this slow, broad circle around you. Her hands drape at her sides and black necrotic energy drips from her fingertips like blood. And she's staring you up and down and she says, You're not wrong. She says, Does it bother you at all that nothing you're fighting for is real? I mean, it look, she's talking to like just all of you. She's just sort of staring at you, waiting for a response. Ariazi's like, with a giant wing, like, gestures to, like, everything, like, all of this that's happening to us, it directly affects us. That's real enough for me. She says, I wasn't talking to you. You never are. <laughs> she says, Kay, doesn't it bother you that you're doing this for nothing? I wouldn't say it's for nothing. Then what's it for? You're sitting here fighting a pretend war for a pretend world. What is it for? What's any story for? It's for entertainment, to find meaning, to escape. Meaning? You want to talk to me about meaning? 
She comes stalking toward you. Ariazis can't hear Kay's half of the conversation. She stalks toward the dragon and she stares like just burning with fury up at her. She says, I have spent the last three years trying to understand meaning. Do you know what I found? Nothing. There's no meaning. There's no purpose. Everything here is not real and it means nothing. And if I have to prove that to you with your own blood, I will! Everyone roll initiative. Bashaba uses her first round, uh, the surprise round, to cast Wall of Ice. She encircles all of you in this enormous 70 foot long wall of ice that completely encircles you. She says, no help from your friends, no gods barging in, just you and me. Let's go! Selwyn, you're first up in the order. Fuck it, I'm just gonna try this. Uh, I'm gonna try casting uh, synap uh, synaptic static. Synaptic so, static, what does that do? Wow, that's <laughs> Make an int save. An int save, she has a very good int save. Okay, that's good enough so that bit fails, but uh, I can still use my um, crown of stars thing. Okay, go ahead and roll a spell attack. 21, so no. Nope. It's Bashaba's turn. Excellent. Um, well, okay, so there's a very obvious target that's standing about 20 feet above her. A giant uh, white dragon is nothing to sneeze at. But that said, she knows the white dragon, and she knows the white dragon's weakness. Uh-oh. Selwyn, make a deck save. Oh, God. Oh, no! 25. Actually, that's a 1. She's going to use her legendary action, Toll the Bell. You've rolled a natural one. Cool. Uh, so you are going to take... Let's see. Oh god, we have no healers. Oh god. Mm, that's true. Oh no. You're gonna take 10d6 fire damage. Uh, okay, you take 43 points of fire damage as a fireball explodes around you. Um, are, what, what is the white dragon's stat like for dragons? Are they resistant to fire or anything like that? Old, but I don't see anything resistant to fire, no. Okay. In that case, you also take 43 points of fire damage because you're right next to Selwyn. Um, Bashaba is going to use another legendary action. She's going to move, and she is going, after blowing up a fireball directly on top of Selwyn, she is going to head straight to Nyla. Uh, and Excellent. that is all she can do on this turn. Nyla, yeah. Bashaba comes barreling toward you, and she's not looking at your face, she's looking at the swords in your hands. You have a pretty clear idea of what she's going to do. Uh, the goddess of misfortune is barreling toward you. What do? I, okay, can I, it's something I would know. If I cast invisibility on myself, she's going to see through it, right? That's not like a thing that's going to... I mean, you don't, you can't say for certain. You can try to make a, um, let's say an insight check to see okay. if you can determine how powerful she might be and what sort of abilities she'd have. Have great insight, yeah. Okay. Oh, hey, that was pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, you don't know, probably, but you're not sure. Okay, um, I'm not gonna waste my time doing that then. Um, is anybody else with who's close to me? Is anybody near me? The, you're near a dragon. Yeah, okay. I was like the giant. You mean yeah, that? You're within five feet of me. I think I'm just gonna go fucking go for her then. <laughs> yeah, just jump or hide behind me or something. Oh, what? Uh, that's a roll to hit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that yeah, that hits. How? How? <laughs> that 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 is a hit. Oh god, that never works. Okay. <laughs> um, Go ahead and roll damage. I don't really know how to do. Okay, so technically it's sneak attack. Um. Holy fucking shit. Yeah. How? <laughs> what? Wow. <laughs> oh god. Attack? With a, uh, I'm Genesis. I'm guessing with Genesis. Yeah, the 10d6 is the sneak attack. 46 mm -hmm. and 44 plus your regular bonuses. Yeah, holy fucking shit, yeah. Nyla. Jesus wow. Christ. <laughs> so I think how this happens is even you are a little taken aback by yeah, how definitely. fucking strong this sword is. Like, you slash into her and you're expecting the usual thing that happens when you stab an enemy. But instead of that, there's like this pulse of necrotic magic that just eats away at where the gash was. Uh, and Bashaba hisses loudly and staggers back a step uh, and uses, there's a, she has some regenerative abilities that knits some of it up, but not all of it. Not nowhere near all of it. I think I stare down in horror at like the swords and I'm like, oh, oh, holy shit. Uh, you still have an offhand attack or a bonus action if you want to use it. You do have uh, Eschaton. 
I'm, I'm gonna jump behind. <laughs> yeah, I was I'm like, use the dragon, dragon for cover! <laughs> yep. The dragon is several sizes larger than you, so you can occupy the same space as her as a halfling. Oh, sweet. Yep, we're doing that. Alright, you dive underneath, um, you dive underneath Ariazes. Uh, speaking of which, Ariazes, it's your turn. Uh, Nyla just it's... dove underneath you. And right. Bashaba looks right. like she's gonna move heaven and earth to get to her. Right. And, uh... Ariazi's like, you know what? I don't want to crush you, so I'm not going to move. I can't see you. She, like, cranes back, like, I can't really see where you are. And she's going to let out an icy blast of air. She is oh, resistant cold. to cold damage. Oh, that's fine. Uh, uh, does she need to make a save make or a, something? Yeah, DC 22 comp save. 30, 31 uh, probably does it, so that's no damage because yeah. she's already resistant. Uh, so you bellow out this, and it is fucking impressive like a cone of cold yeah. that just blasts out around her Mishaba makes this dismissive gesture with her hand and it just funnels past her just avoiding her completely and she says you're going to have to do better than that now you're a dragon so i assume you have some multi-attack capability yeah i guess yeah we'll go with the uh the bite and the claws then no you rolled a natural one so no go yeah, ahead and roll no. again that is a hit that is also a hit. Okay, good. So, so do claws. claw times two. All right. So you lunge your head down to bite her. She definitely dives out of the way. Uh, then your claws come out. One sweep, two. You slash her with both for a total of 30 damage, you said? Yes. And then um, as my, I guess. Selwyn, you are up at the top of the order. Uh... No, I'm sorry. Bishaba's going to use a legendary action. Oh, of course. Of course. Uh, she is going to curse you with bad luck. I'll copy and paste this, but it's a short description. The Shaba targets a creature she can see within 100 feet and curses them with bad luck. The next three rolls of any kind they make will have a result of one. Oh. <sighs> okay. Do you know you're affected by that? You feel some kind of curse. You you can make an arcana check to see if you know the exact nature of it. Yeah, I'm going to do that real quick. Wait, it's... does this count as one of the rolls? <laughs> Oh, you know no. what? That's a good point. You are absolutely <laughs> right. You have no fucking idea what she did to you, Selwyn. <laughs> it feels like magic. <laughs> it feels of any kind, you're right. Shit. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Well, I was going to do this anyway, so she's going to do an Eldritch Blast. Three of those. So two of those are going to be ones. So I'm going to roll the last one. Ah, clever. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to use it up. A 14 is not a hit, my friend. Yep, that's that's fine. At least, uh, at least you're not, uh, affected anymore <laughs> by bad yep, luck. Yep, so I'm still gonna use one of those moats. <laughs> okay, make a spell attack. A 26 is not a hit. No. Oh my god! You have to roll a natural 20 with a plus 10 modifier. She has an Yo. AC of 30. Which fucking sucks. Where? Uh, Bishaba. It is Bishaba's turn. Oh, she's got so many good spells. But right now, she has one extremely particular target. Um, Aryazis. Yeah? Make a wisdom save. Oh boy. You are trying to beat a 24. Oh god. That's not good enough, Kay. Yeah, I was like, it's not a thing. Oh boy. Bishaba casts Imprisonment. Oh boy. Excellent. That's really fun. Great. There are a lot oh. of different ways that she can do this. I think uh, she is going to use. Uh, she is going to use Minimus. Uh, you are going to shrink down into the size of one inch tall and imp become imprisoned in a crystal. And that leaves Nyla very, very, very extremely exposed. And Bishaba stands sort of just smiling at you like, hi. Nyla, you're up. Your dragon cover's gone. And you're also surrounded by a wall of ice, so there's really nowhere else to hide. I guess behind Selwyn, you could try Selwyn. <laughs> it's like my one thing, and it's no longer a thing. Well, that's unpleasant. Um... Yeah, and I'm also looking at this spell I'm like, shit, how am I going to fucking get out of this spell? <laughs> It's gonna yeah. take a pretty powerful spell to get you out. If anyone's listening, now will be a great time to maybe uh, c come down and help. Just any, uh, just 
<laughs> she just sort of shouts at the sky. I think while that's going on, Selwyn is just like frantic over what just happened to Ariazis. Like, she's that's, trying to hold it yeah. together. That's a reasonable reaction to what just happened. It's going to take some pretty powerful mojo to end that spell. We're going with Pokemon rules, uh, which means... <laughs> I mean, you can try. You can try using the swords. But again, if you fail it, that's 8d6 psychic damage. Wait, I can, I can destroy non-living matter. You can destroy part of the wall. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So you want to use the sword. How much of the wall do you want to destroy? You just want the like, just back of it or all um, of it? I think I want part of it because then I'm going to run behind it. <laughs> <laughs> just leave Solane in the middle of this <laughs> horrifying thing. Yeah, that's probably fine. What's the worst that could happen? She's coming after me, so <laughs> really I'm actually just <laughs> leading her away from you. Yeah, she's I not above them. using her, using your friends as bait. Okay. Uh, Nyla, you loft up Eschaton. Uh, it glows brilliant white, and some of the uh, ice wall that she had surrounded you all with uh, dissolve. It doesn't even. It's there's not even any like shimmer of magic around it as it dis- vanishes. It's just it's there and it's not, which is actually like worse. Like you'd prefer if it like dissolved away in a gentle flurry of magic. It's just gone. Just all of a sudden, there was ice and there's not ice anymore. Excellent. Um, hey, quick question: Is it possible for me to pick up Ariazis? Uh, she is currently in a gem on the floor. I believe if you want to pick her up, that would consume the rest of your turn. You could not run. Uh, no, I would normally, if it was, if it was pre if it was original game, Nyla should just run, but she doesn't. Um. <laughs> oh, character development! <laughs> character development! Oh, that's my coke! That's my cocaine! I, I love it. that uh, shit! I'm gonna pick up Ariazis. <laughs> Thank you! Like, this time I got you, friend. <laughs> All right, normally it would be Ariazi's turn, but not no more. You know, not, sure can't do not, n- not, not anymore. So, Lane, it's now your turn. Cool. Half the ice wall is gone, so you're not trapped anymore, which is... That's good. Uh, but uh, your girlfriend is currently being held, and also there's a power-mad, doom-driven goddess standing about ten feet from you. Yeah, that's uh, great. You said she was ten feet away from me? She sure is. Cool. I'm going to use Thunderstep. What's that? That sounds cool. That's oh. awesome. Oh, yeah. Teleport yourself into an unoccupied space you can see within range. Immediately Outside. A thunder, thunderous boom sounds, and each creature within 10 feet of the space you left must make a con saving throw. I assume you're going to, because you are a, uh, a, a different kind of wizard now, you can exempt Nyla? Yeah. Okay. Well, also, oh yeah, Nyla didn't move. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I didn't go anywhere. Yeah, because she had to move to grab me. Right. Oh, you can also teleport one willing creature. Your size are smaller. Oh, hey! Oh, yeah, and you were, like, right next to me because I was right next to Ariazis. So, yeah, right. 100%. Right. I grab you. Oh, sweet. <laughs> okay, so here's how this goes. Selwyn grabs Nyla by the wrist, and there is an explosion of thunder. I feel like it rattles the, uh, the remaining ice wall, and it does... She has to make a con save? Yep. Rats. Oh, literally, there's no way unless she got rolled in that one. But she yep. gets half damage. <laughs> yep. 3d10 divided so by 2. 12 damage. And then I'm going to use a bonus action to expend another moat. Do it. Try that. It ain't going to work, but I'll try it. Nope. All right. So here's what happens. You thunderstep away. Uh, there's a shock of thunderous force that uh, that uh, explodes out from you in your wake. And you manage to disappear and reappear. Uh, how far? What's the range of the spell? 90 feet. <clears throat> so I'm assuming you're using just all of that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, you bloop 90 feet away, and you can hear uh, Bashaba in the background just saying, You can keep running, but it's not going to change anything! Uh, and as you are getting your bearings... Nyla, that was a hell of a ride. You've never seen Selwyn do that before. Yeah, this is, this is a very odd... <laughs> it was kind of cool, though. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Uh, and as you are gaining your bearings, and you're, I imagine, like, turning to Selwyn, it's like, Okay, oh, well, what's the plan now? We've got to get Timora over here. Who has the closest link to Timora? What do we do? You hear a voice behind you say, Give it to me. My turn. It's Salvador! Oh my god, hey! I have a... Wait, He's that? holding out one hand for the crystal. He says, Quick, give it to me! I can dispel it! Uh, it is, unfortunately, um, Bashaba's turn now. Uh, you are 90 feet away. 
And she sees Salvador. Bashaba screams and uh, casts Incendiary Cloud. And all of you need to make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, you are all going to eat full damage. Uh, so 38 points of damage for everyone except Nyla, who's using evasion. Bashaba says, that's not going to help you. And then it is Nyla's turn. Um, I like look at Sal and I'm like, Sal, you're so glad you're alive. Anyway, you can get in touch with Timora, you know. I mean, that's not really my area, but don't get me wrong. Like, as soon as I'm able, I'm going to cast Divine Intervention and then I'm going to get Ill Matter down here, but you've got to do something fast, okay? Ill Matter? You're going to get, okay, never mind. Um, (laughs) and I can't leave you all. Normally I would just cast Dimension Door and I'd leave, but I can't. (laughs) It's the worst. I hate having a conscience. (laughs) (laughs) Salvador, what have you done to her? You can get a little creative with, the, with that creation of matter thing. You wanna. Well, I can't create matter without having to roll a DC You can't save, create right? living matter. Oh, but I can create uh, Okay. You can smash her with an anvil. A la Acme. I mean, <laughs> sure. I mean, actually, yes. <laughs> I mean, if you want to get super technical, fire is non-living matter. You can set her no, on true. fire. Right. <laughs> She's or you could like, you could put a vat of you could turn the ground underneath her into a vat of acid. So, so is she flying right now, or is she standing on the ground? She cannot fly. She can't fly, so she's standing on. Oh, the she ground. has a spell to make herself fly, but she can't naturally fly. Okay. Um. Let's see here. Yeah, I think we're gonna create like a pit of like spikes. <laughs> right Where? Underneath her. Right underneath her. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> So we're going to treat this as a hazard, uh, which under the Dungeon Master's Guide specifies that uh, if because she starts her turn in it, she's not going to take any damage. But if she tries to move out of it, she will take damage. Okay. No, I'm going to do that. That sounds fun. How big do you want to make this spike pack? You can literally make it as big as you yeah, want to make it. It's big. It's like a yeah. 60 foot radius pit, I think. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Salvador's like, I'll unpack that later. Yep. But Okay. <laughs> It's yeah, very... Subway's so horrified, but yeah, it's got style. We all knew that this was going to be horrifying. We knew that giving me this ability was a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, we did it anyways. And we so did it anyway. Here we are. That's what I do. And then also, I'm going to use a bonus action to use Misty Step and be like, I love you all, but still, I want to be 30 feet away. <laughs> okay. Are we out amongst a bunch of people now? Like, uh, You the... are in the middle of the, the fray. Uh, all around you, uh, there are demons clashing with your soldiers, clashing with Shadarkai, clashing with all manner of just... This battlefield, like, you've never been on, battlefe- on a battlefield before, but this is pretty buck wild, you're pretty sure. Like, even for we've a battlefield... We've been on a battlefield once. Grand total of one time. Yeah, this is the first time you've been on a battlefield, but you feel like this is probably a little weird. Yeah. It's getting crazier by the second. Uh, as Nyla Misty steps backward, uh, Salvador grips his holy symbol uh, very, very tightly, and he says, Sup, Ill Matter. <laughs> I, know, um, I know our relationship has been a little rocky. I know I only started worshipping you, like, two months ago at most. But if you could do me a solid, I would really, really appreciate some help against this to prevent the end of the world, if you don't mind, if that's okay. Uh, And he opens his eyes and he looks around and nothing happens. So, Wayne, it's your turn. Oh my god. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um... We can can talk during this still, right? Yep, you can. Talking is a free action. Nyla sees this and she's like, Sal, Sal! She's shouting at him 30 feet away. <laughs> I'm calling Eldath! I, I don't, I don't worship Eldath anymore! That's not how it works! I'm a cleric! I get my power from Ill Matter! No, you don't! You get your Just power try from... it! Just do it! I, well, I only have one action on my turn, so I can't! Okay, but next time, <laughs> desperate times. Come on, man! I, I... You followed her your whole entire life! I know, but... So, Wayne? Yeah? It's your turn. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, I'm aware! <laughs> I think she's going to I'm gonna cast Storm Sphere. Storm Sphere. That's pretty cool. Oh boy, that's a lot so of text. <laughs> uh, Twin <laughs> Sphere of Whirling Air springs into existence centered on a point that you choose. 
Uh, each creature in the sphere has to succeed on a strength saving throw or take 2d6 bludgeoning damage. This action each returns to cause a bolt of lightning. Center of the sphere to hit a creature you choose within 60 feet. Nice. Yup. Okay, so she needs to make a strength save. Yep. Eleven's mm -hmm. not gonna do it, so she's gonna take bludgeoning damage. How long does the spell last? Uh, the spell lasts one minute. It's not nothing. I'm gonna use one of the moats. That's God still not good enough. It. God damn it. Yeah, you've gotta roll a natural twenty, basically. Uh, yeah, to I hit know, her. I know. I think you're tapped out. You got one bonus action per turn, so. Yeah. But talking is a free action, so I'm also shrieking for the Raven Queen to come over and help us. Uh, well, it's a big battlefield, and she's a goddess, but that doesn't mean she can hear everything that's going on all the time, so. Yeah, I know. I understand. <laughs> that I'm not, you know, expecting just to be heard. Just screaming. Just screaming all the time. Yep. Forever. Yep. Uh, Bashaba goes stalking forward, and yeah, it's pretty agonizing. Uh, you can see the spikes that are cutting her with each step. Uh, she is looking pretty wounded, but not as wounded as she needs to look. And she's saying, do you really think you can keep this up? I think Nyla turns t towards her and says, I don't know if we can, but all I know is we have to try. Why? Why do you have to try? This would be so much easier for you if you just gave me what I want! Isn't that just life? This isn't life! This is a tawdry facsimile of life! This is a crude artist's rendition of life! This is nothing! You are nothing! To you, maybe. Uh, she screams and she casts... She casts Summon Greater Demon. Oh. There is a very loud thump behind you. Behind me. <laughs> yeah, really close to you, Nyla. You who uh, oh. who oh. was who ran away very very quickly in the opposite Dang. direction. <laughs> okay, great. Just what I wanted. Um, it is it is Salvador's turn. Salvador, who is increasingly looking frantic, like he hasn't even turned around to look at what that is. He's like, nope. And then he just claps his hands together and he says, listen, I know, please, I know that, I know that my faith isn't as good as he needed to be, but please just, I, and he, like he, in his heart of hearts, the, the reason Salvador hasn't like switched back to Elbath is because in the core of him, he's terrified that she's just not going to take him back. He's, oh. He's terrified that he's going to call out to her and try to reach her for magic and will be met with absolutely nothing. Because he feels like he's failed her. He lost his faith and he doesn't know what else a cleric can do for the deity that they're supposed to worship. And you can sort of hear the echo of that in his voice. He's saying, Elmetter, please, I know, I know that we haven't. And then that figure behind you, Nyla, mm -hmm. leans down and whispers, hold on. And then an enormous rush of water comes careening past all of you. What? It is an enormous wall of crystal clear water that flattens Bishaba directly against her wall of ice. She takes 32 force damage as she is thrown backward into her own wall. Holy shit. Holy crap. Salvador turns around and hovering just behind you uh, is not a demon, as you originally thought it was, uh, but there is a woman who looks sort of ethereal, sort of see-through, like pale blue. Uh, her features aren't d very distinct, and her hair flows backward down her back like a waterfall. Uh, and she is concentrating and holding the spell in place, and she says, She's coming. You're going to have to do this soon. As soon as she gets here, I'm going to pull the trigger. I don't care what cost. She says, get as close as you can. The water will part for you. Nyla, it's your turn. <laughs> Salvador, by the way, is staring in astonishment. Okay, I'm gonna do the stupid thing that I hate. I'm gonna run directly at Bashaba. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to do anything special? You can use your turn to ready an action. Um, yeah, I guess I'm gonna pull my sword out and I'm gonna get ready to cat or get ready to try to um, create matter. <laughs> Or combined matter? Or... Combined matter. There we go, yes. Yeah, or, you know, spirit. 
Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't work, who knows? Let's find out! <laughs> right now you can see Bashaba pressed backwards against the wall. She's coughing and sputtering and she says, Eldath! Release me, you whore! But Eldath does not. She keeps the wall of water crashing forward. And Nyla, as you walk forward, indeed the water parts for you, uh, just as she promised it would. Your swords are out, you ready your action. Um, it's Bashaba's turn, she tries to move her arms just to cast a spell. Nope. She tries to oh. raise her hands to cast a spell, but the water keeps pressing her backwards. And she slams back against the wall and she says, You can't do this! You can't do this! I was so close! And from above her, a very familiar golden light shines down. Familiar specifically to Bishaba, who looks up furiously. And you can't even tell through the water if that's tears streaming down her face or if it's just Eldath's incredible rush of water. Uh, there is a woman hovering down above her and she says, Sister, it's time to go. And Bishaba says, No! I won't let you! I won't let you! She says, You've done enough, sister. It's time to end this. She says, It's not real! You know it's not real! I told you it's not real! Let me go! Nothing here matters! And the lower Timora floats down toward her, the more concerned her expression becomes. And she says, Sister, where did you get the idea that something has to be real for it to have meaning? Nyla, it's your turn. Oh, I'm gonna try to uh, combine them, put them back together, restore what was whole. Roll a con check. Oh my god, that's so cool! Okay, wait. I have this new feat at level 20 called Stroke of Luck, and it says that if I miss a target within range or fail an ability check or saving throw, I can treat the d20 as a 20. <gasps> oh! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, I, it's an ability I... check or it's a saving throw. So, yeah, yes. that counts. Yes! 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 Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> the sound that this spell makes is deafening. It rings straight through you, straight through your head. It rattles your brain inside of your skull and it hurts to look at it. There's an explosion of light and sound in all directions. The water evaporates. The stone wall of ice shatters to dust around her. And the battlefield for just a couple seconds goes absolutely silent. Everything is getting quieter now. There are people, um, many of your soldiers, who are going through the battlefield and uh, cutting the throats of any demons that are still gurgling. But for the most part, it's pretty quiet. Uh, Kitar, you are still picking yourself up off the ground. You just had a Tarask land on you, and then you were saved, but your mind is still kind of hazy as to what happened? Like, you were in a lot of pain. Yeah. Uh, and just as you're trying to recall... The details of what happened as you're looking around, uh, you hear, Katar! That voice, like, his head snaps up and he's like, Sal? Uh, Sal 150 pounds of elf hits you square in the chest. Uh, <laughs> and he just hugs you and he hugs you and he keeps on hugging you. And as he's hugging you, he is sobbing and you can see the ice in his hair slowly melting away as he's holding you because the only cure for frost fever a disease that feeds on sadness is pure joy. Oh, <laughs> my heart. Yeah, um, Katar wraps his arms around um, Sal, like, so tightly, like, squishing. He's like, oh, it worked. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't think. <laughs> I didn't think it would either, to be perfectly honest. Uh, he's gripping you so hard and just, yeah, like, he tries to keep talking, but eventually he just devolves into sobbing. And then Katar is like, also, how dare you assume that I would be with Dritz when it has always been and would only ever be you, Sal. Uh, he sniffs. He's not, he's not a pretty crier. Like, wow, is he not a pretty crier? He pulls back just <laughs> enough to, like, wipe the snot off on his wrist. And he says, this is just, just trying to make it easier. Katara kisses him. Uh, Salvador fled the battlefield pretty quickly, um, and the rest of you, I imagine, it was kind of like, let's let him, 
let's let him. Let's, yeah. give, let's, let's yeah. give him a second. Uh, you're all trudging your way back to the fortress. Uh, and as you do, uh, the Raven Queen is standing uh, just inside the gates. Uh, she looks a little worse for wear, like she's taken a couple hits, but she's still standing. Yeah, I think Selwyn just rushes over to her. And... The Raven Queen sweeps you up into a very, very big hug, and she kisses your head beatifically, and she says, Oh, good. All the limbs still attached? Still breathing? <laughs> uh-huh. I guess that's about the most I can ask. She says, Where's, um, where's your friend? And Selwyn's face just falls. Um, Shaba used imprisonment on her. Oh, sweetheart, is that all? Where's, where is she? I'll dispel it. I step forward and uh, give it to Selwyn. Teeny tiny dragon crystal. Uh, yeah, the Raven Queen uh, takes the uh, crystal, looks at it appraisingly for a minute, and goes, huh, and then crushes it in her fist. And suddenly there's this explosion of magic and this enormous white dragon just sort of tumbles out of the crystal. Uh, and she looks down at Ariazi's like, oh, well, wasn't expecting that. <laughs> you all right, sweetheart? <laughs> She's gonna, like, transform back into her tiefling form and be like, ah, better now, thank you. And Selwyn's already, like, flung her arms around you, like. <laughs> yeah, while you two are, like, gross sobbing on the floor, she, like, reaches down and offers you a hand up, Ariazis. Ariazis takes it, and also with her other arm around Selwyn, like, it's okay, I was just in a tiny crystal. Just in a tiny crystal, someone I was <laughs> <laughs> Tiny dragon in a crystal, it was adorable. <laughs> The Raven Queen kind of laughs and she says, It's all right, sweetheart. In case you haven't noticed, you've won. Shit, we yeah. have. We did. <laughs> yeah, you did. did. And looking out at the battlefield, it's sort of difficult to believe. Like, yeah, you've won. There are some 10,000 demon corpses lying dead. There's the carcass of a Tarrasque just lying on the mountainside. You're not sure what you're gonna do with that. <laughs> I think, um, as soon as it snaps that, like, oh, shit, we actually managed this. So Wayne just, like, grabs Nyla into a giant hug, like, swings her up off her feet. And this <laughs> is, like, the only time she manages to do it, because she got the element of surprise here. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, Nyla would never... It's true. I'd like to point out that uh, I dropped the sword immediately after this whole fucking thing yeah. went down. <laughs> Valid! <laughs> uh, as you are swinging Nala around like a very short sack of potatoes, uh, Salvador <laughs> comes running up from behind and joins the hug. Just tackles you. It's like you land in the snow. <laughs> and Nala, you are kind of crushed underneath two elves. <laughs> so Wayne rolls off just <laughs> Y'all are so big. You're so big. <laughs> Saladar's like <laughs> hugging you really, like way, way, way too tightly. Yes. I can't, I can't. Sal, this is a bad hug. This is not a good There's hug. There's no such thing you. as a bad hug. <laughs> oh, Ariazis oh, is like tapping. Back. Ariazis like tapping your face with her tail like, you did a good job. You did the thing. <laughs> <laughs> you did it, Nala. I can't believe you did it. I know, and I only ran away once. <laughs> That's pretty good, considering! Thank you! That's what I thought! <laughs> That's what I'm planning on telling them at the, my tribunal for my death. Salvador sits up and he's like, Did you see? Did you see what happened? Yeah! She answered! Elfath came for you! She answered me! I didn't- I wasn't- I wasn't We believed sure. in you! I wasn't, she did, Sal. I wasn't sure she would. After I lost my faith, I- but she actually answered. I asked for help and she came. <laughs> and he hugs you again, Nyla. He's ugly Aww. crying again. He's he's going to be ugly Aww. crying for a while. So You're happy. Just, I, thought she, I thought she left me. <laughs> and he's he starts crying again. That's like the third time today. <laughs> <laughs> and so Wayne just hugs him again and kind of pulls him a little bit off Nyla to give her some breathing room. <laughs> I'm assuming Katara has, like, moved his way over here, too, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. exactly. It's he like, probably dragged Katara over? over with him. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's like, all right, all right, let's stop. Katara's like, let's stop crushing Nyla. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are really lucky that I dropped all the swords on the ground. This is, this is, oh, man. She, she, like, she can't be, she's trying to be cranky, but she can't be too cranky because she really missed everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Nyla. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Describe what the office of the Grand Duchess of Baldur's Gate looks like now. 
Bearing in mind that this used to belong to Grand Duke Porter, and you've had to reno the place. Presumably it was, like, very classy when it belonged to Grand Duke Porter. <laughs> oh, yes. Right? It, it was yeah. very, very classy and ostentatious. Excellent. It is no well. It is now ostentatious, but in a very gaudy way. <laughs> um, Nyla, Paint us a word picture. She does not have enough money to have taste, or she has too much money and no taste. <laughs> so oh God. Um, it's everything. I think. I think we're gonna stick with the Meriwether Faustus theme. Everything is in horrendous shades of lavender oh, no. and no! peacock oh, no. green. <laughs> Because that's what she thinks looks impressive. <laughs> so it's just like, and like, oh god, gold. And like, not all of it's real. And you can tell, like, especially if you know. <laughs> like, she just like spray to, painted. Like, spray painted gold. <laughs> she went to the equivalent of like Pier One. And oh bought, no! Like, oh. Yeah. She went to uh, Fantasy like, Pier One. She went to oh, Fantasy no. Pier One. They have like some of those like Fantasy fake Ikea. Like, you know the giant elephant ones? Like, oh, the no! Oh. The Maharaja elephants? The ones yes. with the saddles? Yes. Oh, God. That's what she has. Yep, oh, she has those no. statues everywhere. And Terrible. She's... <laughs> and she's hired a bunch of people just, like, to wave fans at her face. That's, <laughs> that's definitely what's happened. Oh, my God. So, yeah, that's what she's turned poor Baldur's Gate headquarters into. She might later be talked down, but this is, like, like this is now she just has too much money and she has no idea what to do with it. <laughs> um, so you are currently being uh, dressed down by your Viscount, uh, the one that was appointed uh, by Dritz Dorden. And, like, don't, don't get it twisted. This lady knows what she's doing, but also you hate her. Okay, like, yes, like right. she's so good at her job, it bothers you. <laughs> and like she and she knows like you're new at this and she's always on your back about doing shit that you just don't want to do. <laughs> so she's sitting there with like her half moon spectacles with like a little like a clipboard and she's like, "So are you going to get on the board meeting today?" It's just look the board meetings Grand are so boring. Duchess they're just can't you give me a recap afterwards isn't it possible that you just like you're no, so smart you're so I, smart. you just write down notes and then you'll just tell me what happened and i'll get back to you with my I thoughts i am immune to flattery is the thing this is <laughs> the worst have i told you recently that you're the worst have i, t have I told you that i just you know what 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 Sal kicks in the door hey <laughs> Oh god. Sal, I guess hey! hug him. It's been a couple of months since you've seen him. He is dressed um a more druidy now than he ever has been traveling with you guys. He's got like this really long um like ostentatious looking kind of floral cloak uh and a big old smile and he says, "Hey." <laughs> Uh, yeah, he yeah, probably he has, like, you can't keep him away. Like, even okay. though it is so far away, like, the high forest from Baldur's Gate, like, he just keeps making the treks back and forth. Aww. He says, hey, just wanted to stop in, give you a formal invitation to the dumb coronation that's happening next week or whatever, I don't know. The what? Yeah, the coronation is whatever, mm -hmm. but listen, that's not what's important. Nyla runs up and gives him a huge hug. Hey, right hey. In the middle. Oh, come on, we knew this was gonna happen. I know, but still, it's so exciting. Oh my god, you're gonna be, you're gonna be king. Yeah, um, I'm not too crazy about it. Like, I'm kind of in your camp. Like, I'd just rather not, but I guess I gotta, because I'm a part of my bloodline or whatever. Uh, protector me, of the forest. But me. have you ever thought about coming back to Baldur's Gate and being in charge here? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One is enough. Excellent. Okay. Well, I was just hoping, but sure, fine. <laughs> anyway, here's the invite to the coronation. It's it's casual. It's whatever. I mean, like it's about as like formal as it gets for druids. But like druids aren't super formal, is the thing. You know, like <laughs> formal druid wear is like nice bark. So just you know, wear whatever. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Um, it's just, anyway, are you, anyway, are you coming to the wedding? The wedding? Of course, I'm coming to the wedding. Oh, yeah, I can't wait. Now that's going to be a party. Do you think I get a plus one for both of those events? Maybe. I mean, <laughs> definitely I look, for the coronation, because I'm in charge of that, but I don't know for I the wedding. I look over at the Viscount, and I'm like, it's not gonna be you. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, okay. She's like, I wasn't going to ask Grand Duchess. Like, this long-suffering <laughs> sigh. <laughs> like, I probably won't even bring a plus one, I just wanted to make sure. Anyway. Um... <laughs> And, uh, like, uh, Salvador waves at her awkwardly, like, hey. 
I've been looking forward to this wedding forever. Good chance to celebrate, have a party, see some oh, good yeah, friends of ours know, get right? married. Yeah, I definitely. can't wait. It's going to be a freaking bomb.com blast and a half. I cannot <laughs> wait. She says, bomb.com? <laughs> anyway, I think that day is for three or four weeks after the coronation. So once you do the coronation thing, just, you know, swing on by. Uh, head on. I think it's being a taste in place in Neverwinter, right? That's what they decided on the... Uh, I think that's what I heard, yeah. Yeah, this is Neverwinter. Okay, so it's kind of a hack, but, you know, whatever. You're going to be in the high forest anyway. It looks like you're going to have to be away from your courtly duties for a, for a month or so. Oh, no. So oh, darn. I, oh, man. I, I look back at the Viscount, and I'm like, do you think someone's going to be able to handle that for me in my absence? <sighs> <laughs> Salvador's like, and also, can you handle things in her absence right now? Because I want a sweet bun. Oh, man, see, I can't go to that board meeting. Sorry, bye. I grab Sal and I run away. <laughs> uh, so the coronation was lovely. Um, <laughs> it was very short uh, because druids don't like ceremony all that much. They just kind of want to get things over with. Like, the High Forest has been without a king for long enough. Let's just hurry it along so we can get back to the rebuilding process and everything. Uh, but a less auspicious ceremony takes place uh, directly after. Uh, and it involves Salvador, um, Qatar, Ariazes, and Archdruid Halia, uh, who was the Archdruid of the Circle of the Moon that Qatar and uh, Ariazes belong to. Uh, and you are all waiting for him in a room. And I imagine that uh, Selwyn is probably also there because Selwyn just goes where Ariazes goes most of the time. Yep. Just... yep. She's druid adjacent. <laughs> She's dru <laughs> she is druid related. I love it. Uh, Salvador uh, eventually does uh, come inside and he closes the door behind him. He's like, sorry, I'm late. Okay, so I don't really want to spend too much time on this whole ceremony thing. Uh, and he's got like this really huge, awkward wooden box under one arm and he kind of like slams it down on the table in front of you. He's like, so let's get this over with. Short version of the story is that traditionally the half forest has always been run by the Glade King or the Glade Queen and then three arch druids that uh, serve uh, at his, at his well, the technical term is at his pleasure, but you don't have to like, it seems weird because like you're all my friends. And, except for you, Katar, you can serve Anyway, um, <laughs> Qatar is like, <laughs> and he like opens the box and there are three beautiful, um, circlets, one made of brass, one made of silver, one made of gold. And he says, so traditionally one arch druid serves the land, one serves the, uh, uh, the, 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 the water and one serves the air. And I just thought that, you know, and he sort of distributes the crowns. He's like, not only, uh, do I trust all of you with my life and with the, the fate of my kingdom, you're also some of my best friends, and I, c and also a lot of the other druids are dead after all those attacks, so we, uh, I'm voluntolding you that I, like, I'm asking, but, like, I'm also insisting. Can you please help? Ariazi's like, oh, Sal, of course we'll help. Oh, thank God, because I was not going to be able to do this on my own. <laughs> it's like, it's just, you know, it's a lot of responsibility, right? Like, it's not some trivial thing I'm asking. You would have to, like, live here mostly permanently and everything. Ariazi's, like, <laughs> looks at Qatar and then, like, looks at Sal and is like, uh, don't worry, I think I can make a corner of the forest a little swampier for my taste. Yeah, that's why I was going to put you in charge of the water, right? Like, there's actually a natural, like, uh, a natural bog, uh, a little, like, about 20 miles off to the... Anyway, She's I'll show like, it to you great, later. I'm going to go. She starts... <laughs> Which direction is it? Okay, bye! Thank you for coming to my coronation! And then, <laughs> yeah, she's like, swamp, great! She wants to be near water. She, fe I mean, she's a druid. She, like, she grew up around trees, but, you know, swamps are cool as hell. <laughs> and Salvador like watches them go and he's waving them and then uh, he turns back to Katara's like so you're going to the wedding right later? I am going to the wedding but I had a thought yeah what? I'm an archdruid now under you yeah technically and... I mean like as of like 20 seconds ago but yeah still right as of 20 seconds ago and since you are now king does that make me prince consort? huh I mean I guess technically yeah huh. Yeah. No, no, yeah, it totally does. Yeah, Prince Consort. Interesting. Uh, I... I think 
Or maybe it would just be consort because we're not married. I don't know. I'll look into it. If you can't get the title, I'll 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 make the rules. So Prince Consort's a really cool title, so you should have it that is. title. I would. I'll, I'll bend the on rules. That title. I'll okay. bend the rules. I'll make I it work. Have to rub this in Ariazi's face. That's why <laughs> it's very important for me to know. That's and see. That's why you have to go to the wedding, right? Because like, right. You exactly. have to because that's the time to do it, right? On a big day. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, this is a big day and, you know, marriage, but also I'm a prince consort now, so... (laughs) Guitar just, like, sort of quietly laughs, and I like the sound of that. Prince consort. That does have a ring to it. Uh, So the spires of the morning in Neverwinter are done up resplendently. Because of course they are. Because Ember Tremaine was put in charge. <laughs> <laughs> who, who put him? <laughs> no one actually put, put him, him in charge. <laughs> it's just he took charge. Right, exactly. That's what I figure. He's in like, fact, all people of asked him to wrong. not, and he was like, yeah. I won't hear of it. <laughs> yeah, multiple people asked him to not, but they no. They specifically requested that he not have anything to do with it, but he's like, you know, I think you're wrong. But okay. <laughs> he was like, it's, just, it's really noble of you to not want there for my own health, then I understand it, but at the same time, I couldn't possibly let you do that to yourself. <laughs> I've considered your opinion, and no, is my answer. No, is what I'm going with. <laughs> but yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. There are strings of golden flowers uh, hanging from the ceiling, um, and everyone assembled, like, a lot of people turned out for this wedding. Like, a lot, a lot of people. Uh, and Escher is dressed in his beautiful, formal, uh, clerical vestments. Uh, and just as the last people are filtering in, Salvador, like, waves at him, like, way, way too much. Like, just a huge, huge wave. And Escher's staring at him like, I can't, like, <laughs> we're standing in front of half of now Never- Neverwinter, sit the fuck down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he goes through his recitations. Uh, it's not a long ceremony because, uh, everyone here values punctuality. Uh, but it is very meaningful and it is very sincere. And by the end of the speech, he says, By the power vested in me, here in the sight of the morning lord in his holy house, I pronounce you wed. Gentlemen, congratulations. And Vasha and Kostya uh, stand up after having knelt down before him, and Escher makes the gesture for them to embrace. Yeah, I, Vasha is grinning like an idiot and barely even waited for Kostya to stand up, like, is pulling him to his feet to kiss him. <laughs> Escher laughs, and a couple <laughs> other people scattered laugh, and there's a round of applause that uh, sweeps the room. Uh, and then, uh, in the backmost corner, uh, we zoom in on Ariazis and Selwyn. How are you guys enjoying the ceremony? I mean, Ember didn't plan my wedding, so I'm loving it. Right. <laughs> it's there, so I extra. Like, I feel like, yeah, we're both whispering, like, it's just, this is just so too much way too much of course ember like, that. we're 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 eloping right like, i think actually oh God, i would like yes. to add as for some flavor that ember is definitely radiating holy light <laughs> oh of course God. <laughs> and ariazi's like D- he's doing that thing why does he do that all the time he knows it annoys vasha <laughs> oh oh yeah okay I, ca- I can see why he would do that then but yeah totally we're not we're not gonna do that just no, no absolutely not they can find out later <laughs> move into my hut that's it cool <laughs> Yeah, I'm already basically living there. You mean I can have more than just one drawer? Yeah, I can even make it bigger. Or I can, ooh, I can make you a a treehouse. Do you want a treehouse? Ah! Yes. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) The band strikes up. uh, Vasha and Kostya walk back down the aisle to Grand Affair. Uh, If rice throwing is a tradition in Faerun, who knows? Uh, But yeah. Sure, why not? (laughs) Uh, They throw rice, they release the doves. It's all all very, very extra. Uh, But it is lovely. Uh, at the same time. Uh, and eventually things settle back down, the chapel goes quiet, and Ariazis and Selwain, you find your way. There's a little uh, inner courtyard in the chap- in the spires of the morning, uh, where uh, slices of sunlight come down through between these enormous spires uh, and flood this overgrown garden full of white and gold roses. Uh, and there is a nice little stone bench where you're able to sit down. Cute. <laughs> I love, I love the image. I'm just like imagining it in Ariazi. I know. Like, wow. Like you know, I'm a druid and I love plants, but the excessive amount of white and gold that I know. Is, you know, there are other colors, right? There are not so many. 
I think you'll find, actually. <laughs> right, Ember from the background. You, you in fact, were mistaken. I'm, I'm sorry you didn't realize this. <laughs> Ariazis touches, like, one of the roses and turns it blue, like, <laughs> no. <Nope. Yes. laughs> and then it slowly the spreads out, and all of them become, like, blue, red, pink. <laughs> gonna find you and I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> She's like, other colors of roses exist. <laughs> and then she turns to Selway and like, so... Yeah. Um. She also, like, she looks at Selway and then she also, like, looks around like, so you're still listening in, right? <laughs> Raven Queen? Okay. There's no answer. Although maybe one of the like... roses nearby turns black, maybe? It's hard to tell. <laughs> Right. She's like, I'm gonna assume, yeah, yeah, I agree. Black is actually better than all of this gold. I mean, it's it's interesting. It's different. Black and gold go nice together. Yeah. Just saying. You know, Ember just needs to open his mind to new combinations. <laughs> if this doesn't end with one of you asking the other to get married, I am going to throw my computer out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any idea? <laughs> Ariazi is like, <laughs> looks at Selway and like, I mean, eloping is cool. I like that idea, but maybe if you wanted to hand fast, that's a good idea. And Selwyn's already pulling a ribbon out of her hair. Hey guys, Tessa here. Wow, right? I can't believe it's over. It's been over a year of podcasting, twice as long since the first time we ran Ember and Vasha and Baku through Curse of Strahd, and it's almost kind of unbelievable that it's finally over. I am grateful beyond words for all of you who have listened over these 30, wow, 30 episodes, who waited for new episodes to come out, who joined our Discord server and talked to us. We love you guys so much, and we're so grateful that you were here to share this story with us. We hope you'll stay for the next one, too. Which brings me to my next point, actually. Crit Fail Club will be starting Season 2 on July 1st, 2020. But you won't have to go without any content from us at all. We've actually been sitting on a mini-series called Fight Nights, uh, where we pit the original failures against each other in PvP combat, just to, you know, see what happens? Uh, the episodes are short but fun, and you might be surprised at who ends up coming out on top. Season 2 will be titled Wolf, and it will be played with the Dragon Age tabletop rule set. If you're thinking, wait, isn't Dragon Age a video game? Yes, it is! And it has an officially licensed tabletop game that no one knows about, but which is actually pretty cool. You don't have to know anything about the Dragon Age video games to enjoy it. Two of the players don't actually know anything about the games, but it wouldn't hurt. Plus, they're good games. You should play them. You can make them gay. Go play the Dragon Age games. By the way, if you've liked the music you've heard, our incredible theme song, The Lay of the Raven Queen, Bishaba's Battle Music, The Song of Redemption, the guy who actually made all of it has an EP out. It's extremely good. His name is Vias, and the album is called Neon Dreams. You can stream it now on your service of choice by going to ffm.to slash neondreams.owe. That's ffm.to slash neondreams.owe. Vias is incredibly talented, and you should definitely check out his EP if you're a fan of cyberpunk. As we bring the first chapter of Critville Club to a close, we are beyond excited for the next. We're all looking forward with excitement to see where this goes, and we hope you'll be there to see it with us. Seriously, guys, thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next season. We're okay. I'm okay. It's... It's complicated, but it's fine. 
recombining us didn't fix what was broken in Bishaba, but it did temper it with Taimora's empathy. We, I, know what this world is, but I'm not... It's strange. I have both of their perspectives, but at the same time, neither. I don't have Bashaba's nihilistic vengefulness, but I also don't have Timora's naivety. This world, my world, may not exist for you, but it exists for me. It exists for Selwain and Ariazes and Nyla and Salvador and everyone they met along the way. Their stories are real. They affected them. They affected you too, I think. What about that isn't real? What about that isn't meaningful? I'm going to be okay. You will be too. I know your world is... I know your world has no shortage of its own troubles, but take it from the goddess of fortune. You're going to be okay. You'll make it okay, just like they made it okay. It's going to be hard, but you can do hard things. And, uh, <laughs> good luck.